go. Go live. All right, so as you can see, yeah, YouTube is usually several seconds behind. Are we? Yeah, okay, we are live. All right, so we are here on Titanic. Now, let me get uh, my phone going so I can see your guys' comments um, in the chat because I don't have two screens. Um, oh, my friend posted a video. Um, okay, no time for that now. Turn down that, and where's the comments or the chat? That's strange. There we go. All right, everyone. Hello. So let me, I will read your guys's um, stuff in just a second. Let's go ahead and go on inside. <clears throat> All right, so um, we got Moonzer here. Hello, Moonzer. Hello, Ozzy. Ozzy asked how the weather is today. Um, it's it's nice and cloudy the way I like it. A little bit sprinkly, you know, some some rain here and there. Um, but mostly it's windy, which is really strange. Um, wasn't expecting that weather today. But um, yeah, so it's pretty nice, and it, it means that I get to sip some tea. So. When the weather's nice and cool, I get to have tea, so I'm really happy about that. Um, yes, hello everyone. Hello, History on the Lake. Hello, Max. Hello, Five Caps. Hello, Ability to Page. You guys have such interesting usernames. <laughs> All right, so I suppose I'll just wander around. I'm not really sure where to go. What are we on, B deck? Let's go down to D deck. We almost rarely go there. I'm going to try to keep this as smooth as I can so that people don't get uh, all motion sick. Because I know sometimes when I watch live streams of people going through this game, I get pretty motion sick. So, we're here. This is C deck. And just to give you an example, these are like one of the little corridors. And you can't really go into every single room. You know, this uh, this particular version of the game, this Demo 401, um, oh, you can see the ocean out there. Yeah. This Demo 401, um, it really only lets you see about, you know, 50% of Titanic. I think I need... There we go. Yeah, 50% of Titanic, so... You can't go particularly everywhere, but there are places you can go if you like really want to see a stateroom or something. So, for instance, there's one near here, but this is the purser's desk. For those of you who aren't too familiar with ocean liners, which I'm sure most of you are, most people watching this channel are, um, it, a purser's desk is basically kind of like concierge. You can go there to ask for almost anything. And this is also the same place where you can deposit, uh, well, this is for first class, but this is where you can deposit your letters and things like that if you're trying to, to have a postcard sent when you arrive at your destination. Um, all that kind of stuff. So they can help you with pretty much anything at the concierge desk or the uh, um, uh, purser's desk. But yeah, uh, an example of one of the most famous staterooms on the ship is the Strauss Suite, last occupied by Isidore and Ida Strauss. I believe at the time they were the, um, well, I think he was, was he CEO or something of Macy's or was he president or was he owner? I forget. Um, but yeah, he was basically the, the, the head of Macy's at the time. So, hello, K4RNA. Um, let's see. Yeah, the corridors are really narrow um, because, you know, these were quite old ships and stuff like that. You know, it, it wasn't really until the modern age, I would say even you know, the late 1990s to the 2000s, when even cruise ships started getting really big, like, corridors. Um, honestly, they were pretty narrow. And 
it makes sense when you think about it. I mean, like, not too many people are going to be using the corridors at the exact same time. But at the same time, you want something that feels spacious. So most modern ships today, passenger ships, they have really spacious corridors. But yeah. And what I like about this game is that all the clocks are the correct time. So right now it is 1.07 p.m. where I am. And on this clock it says 1.07 p.m. So pretty neat. All right. And another thing I like about the room is the wood paneling. It's got this... Well, I mean, when you when you stand in the right spot, it looks almost like this cherry red color. But uh, at the moment, it doesn't look so cherry red, which is strange. Um, you might hear background noises uh, because I have my window open. It's on rainy days when I get to keep my window open because... You know, I live in the forest, so so if it's a sunny day and you leave your window open, even like the screen bugs get through the screen somehow, and then they end up in your apartment. And you get spiders and bugs and all kinds of stuff. But uh, on a rainy day like this, there's no bugs. So I like to open my window and get fresh air. Yeah. So this is the um the cabin of the stateroom suite, separate beds, a little wash table made of marble, and then this is a, well, a bathroom and a toilet, that's what they would have called it. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty basic back here, it's the one thing really about Titanic that I don't really like that much is is how industrial looking the bathroom is. I mean, there's, it's got little touches like this little sink that's kind of nice looking, you know. And there's some some cabinetry here and stuff, but when you turn around and you just got all these pipes and plumbing and rivets and I mean, as a you know as a enthusiast of how these ships were built it's cool to see the rivets but it's kind of weird to see it you know in your stateroom suite um historic ships says did anyone know that tomorrow is national beer day no i did not know i don't really drink too much when i was younger i did but um I'm, i don't for some reason i don't like how alcohol makes me feel <laughs> Um, but I used to drink a lot of wine, I used to drink a lot of, well not a lot, but I mean a lot is in variety. I used to drink a variety of wines, I used to drink a variety of cocktails. I think my favorite is cocktails, but even then I can't drink too many of them now. I rarely have them. Um, yeah, so here is a typical first class stateroom cabin, or I guess I should just say cabin. It's hardly a stateroom. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is where they slept. They had their little wash basins, which I feel that these were hooked up to plumbing. But if you go to third class, you'll see that um, they didn't have actual plumbing except for a drain. They instead, for water supply, there was a uh, like a like a big jar or um, or tank made of porcelain sometimes. It depends on what room you're in. Um, and then they would fill that up with water and you would use that as your water supply. But here, I think this was actual plumbing. You got your little heater there. I like those little heaters. Those are pretty cool looking. Yeah. And for those of you who are new, who might be watching after I post this, um, I am not like a Titanic expert or anything like that. Uh, if anything, my knowledge is all about the RMS Queen Mary. So during this little walk around, if I make a lot of references to the Queen Mary, that's because that's kind of what I know. Um, I don't know too much about But um, 
That being said, it is cool to walk around an ocean liner virtually, which, you know, the ocean liner is no longer <laughs> around, you know what I mean? It's at the bottom of the ocean. So it is nice to be able to see something like this and walk around and enjoy it. Yeah, let's see. Joe B says, are there any second class cabins that can be viewed on this demo? That's a good question. I don't remember. Um, let's go to second class. Why not? I rarely get to, to kind of roam around through there. Uh, Five Caps Film says, is the shear represented in this game? Only in one spot. Um, this demo... So, I know usually a demo means that they're going to build up what you see here into the full game. But they, the creators actually decided to start from scratch because they wanted the ship to be as realistic as possible. But one of the things is the typical way you build a place in a game means you build individual rooms and sections of a building and then you you know you have different people working on those different sections and then you bring them all together into you know into one giant building um they were doing that with the titanic but the problem is is you can't do that realistically if your ship has shear and a few other things like camber um and you know various other you know designs um it it just it wasn't possible so they they decided to actually just rebuild the whole thing from scratch literally starting with the hull plates so like right now their updates have been showing that they've been literally putting the hull plates together and they've you know and they've put the the um the um what do you call it um the frames, the frames that, you know, like the ribs of the ship. So the, so the frames, they've, they wanted to make sure they had all the same amount of frames, all the same distance from each other. And, um, yeah. So, um, we, on our way to second class, we're stopping at the first class doctor's office. In fact, I think this is the only doctor's office for the whole ship, but still, um, can see it here. This is where he would have slept, the doctor. His little cabinet. And then his desk, where he would have, patients would have sat there on that little couch and kind of told him what was wrong with them. Could treat simple things in this room, you know, stomach aches, maybe have some something for a stomach ache. Um, but if it was something more serious, there was a ship surgery, which is down here. Normally that door is closed, which is kind of weird. <laughs> it was just open, ready for me to walk down here. That was really strange. Um, but yeah, there is a ship surgery. So I don't know what all these little rooms are. They're various examination and operating rooms. Um, a ship as big as Titanic or even larger, um, they needed hospitals aboard because they acted as kind of the hospital of the ocean. It wasn't just the passengers aboard. It could be smaller freight ships that, you know, maybe like, for instance, the Queen Mary many times had to stop to aid other ships. You know, there was one one in particular, I remember, was there was a storm out in the ocean and uh, and a crewman of a freight ship broke his leg uh while the ship rolled around and they needed you know if you break your leg you need surgery you need a doctor um so they called uh you know a, they made a distress call for any ship that had a hospital or a doctor and uh, queen mary was the closest one so she responded and uh, they they it was this whole big story you know about, about taking a lifeboat one of the queen mary's lifeboats because they're motorized and then, you know, you know, what do you call it? Not sailing it, but 
Anyway, motoring over to the freight ship in the midst of this crazy storm with 30-foot swells, and then picking up the guy with the broken leg, bringing him back to the Queen Mary, hauling him aboard so he could go to the hospital. Um, pretty cool. But they also had this uh, padded room on Titanic. Um, let's see, it says they're padded room. Um, and this would have been for basically people that needed it. Um, if there was some crazy lunatic who was going to kill other people or something, they'd probably put him in the padded room. Or if there was a guest, maybe with special needs or something, who couldn't handle the voyage and were in, uh, you know, in danger of harming themselves, they could be put in the padded room. Although, of course, that never happened because Titanic sank on its maiden voyage. But it, that's what padded rooms were for, or for the things you just couldn't predict. Now, Queen Mary didn't have a padded room, but she did have a, a whole hospital ward with nothing but steel walls. That was called the isolation ward. Can I, I guess I can, Okay, I just have to press F because I can't close that door. There was a previous demo where you could open and close certain doors, and I keep forgetting this isn't that demo. Um, in this demo, you have to load into each class um, because... Well, that's how they managed to get the game so smooth when you when you run it now is loading into each class as opposed to having everything loaded all at once. In a previous demo, they had everything loaded all at once and it just slowed down the whole computer. So we are in second class. We're going to check out to see if there are any second class cabins. And in order to do that, we have to go down. But this is the second class lift. They had only one and it went down this staircase. I can't tell if that... Oh, it's just shiny. Okay. I thought the, the little red light was on. I'm like, that's weird. Um, But yeah, just a, a typical lift, honestly. Little couch and everything. Um, Okay. All right, so down we go. Uh, for those that don't know, this is the uh, this is the second class library. They used it really more as a lounge because the only amount of books they had is in that cabinet. I know. I feel like I say that every time I I play this game and I go in this room, but it's true. Like it just it astounds me. It's like, oh, this is the library, but. You know, you only get, like, ten books. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny. Um, but, yeah, so let's go downstairs. I don't... Like, right off the top of my head, I can't think of any second-class cabin that you can walk into. But it, it would be weird if there wasn't, because they have first-class state rooms, obviously. We saw a few of them. And then they have uh, third-class state rooms that you can walk into. Or I think just one, actually. There's just one first-class cabin that you can walk or third there's one third class cabin you can walk into gosh saying all these classes and cabins and staterooms it just kind of twists me all up i can't think properly all right so we're in uh i think one of the lowest areas no there's one more area down but we can't go because there's a rope there well wait that's third class over there Now, I know that there was a plate, you know, I think I'm on the wrong staircase. There's two second class staircases, and one of them takes you to the second class cabins. And I think I'm at the wrong staircase. Let's go through the second class dining room, or dining saloon, because that's technically what this one is, it's a saloon. Um. some silver dishes if i turn around we can kind of see a wide view of the whole room titanic 227 says hey alex if you notice me i'm in the live chat hello um
Speaking of sweet tooth, I gotta... Made myself the most delicious tea ever, and I haven't been drinking it. Alright, there we go. So, I think I have to go down this staircase. Oh, wait. This might lead to... Yeah, there we go. This might lead to some cabins. So, these are some of the second-class cabins. Now, here's an interesting thing. Notice that the ceiling is much higher. That's because we are on... Um, well, well, I forget what deck. I think this is D deck, but um, it should be. I would be very surprised if it wasn't. Well, yeah, okay. Let's just say it's D deck because I'm pretty sure it is. I, it's just I can't, there's no sign here, but um, but on certain ships, they would choose a certain deck to have one or two major dining rooms for the passengers. On Titanic, for instance, D-Deck has the first class dining room and the second class dining room. And in order to make those rooms have, you know, feel larger, they would actually make the whole deck on the entire ship um, just a few feet taller than uh, the decks below and above it. And Queen Mary had the same thing. Our deck was the restaurant deck. That's where first, second, and third class had their restaurants. And um, and so the, the ceiling height on our deck is just a few feet taller than normal, uh, than, than the rest of the decks, I mean. Um, and that was to give it some extra headroom. So, yeah. I think that's really interesting because, you know, it's just like this random like deck in the middle of the ship that it's just taller than the others so we're getting lost in this maze of titanic but i'm looking for a possible stateroom second class stateroom or cabin that might be open for us to explore but there i don't think there are to be totally honest um, but you never know. Um, but we would know because the uh, door would be open. So let's go down to the next deck. Because I know that there's still... Yep, this is the other one I was looking for. This is where you can find a few more cabins. Nope. And, nope. Well, I can go down another deck. I'm pretty sure this one leads to more cabins as well. Yeah, there we go. See, I know for third class, there is one cabin that you can explore. feel like I'm Rose just running through all the things. Mr. Andrews! Jack, where are you? Okay. Um, try this side. Nope. Nope. Oh. There's a little um, cabin board thingy. So basically if like a if um a passenger um in their cabin needs assistance, uh they could ring the steward and there would be like a little indicator light turning on and it would tell them, you know, there's a plate to tell them what cabin that is and then they could use the button to I don't know, clear it all. Oh, that's it. I don't know what the buttons for actually. But yeah, um that's what they would do. Oh, that's not a hallway. Okay, I thought, thought I saw a hallway next to me. Um, Cat says, I wish they restored more rooms on the Queen Mary, like the Garden Lounge. Um... Hello, Mark. No, you didn't miss much. Um, 
Yeah, I wish they would restore more rooms on the Queen Mary, but unfortunately, you see, I've tried to convince management. I've, I, you know, I spoke to them and, you know, there are various people in management, all really nice folks, um, you know, and they're working really hard to try to make the ship, you know, successful and to plan out for the ship's future and all of that stuff. Um, and I, I suppose I should add context. I'm talking about the Queen Mary for people who are like, what? <laughs> um, but I've spoken to, to the management at Queen Mary, you know, and I've given them you know, a list of suggestions of mine for how to improve the business, how to make it more profitable, and at the same time, you know, like what they should restore and what they should prioritize. Um, and they've taken some of my suggestions and, you know, they're, they're working with, they've taken the suggestions I've made and they're kind of putting their own spin on it, you know, to create their own stuff, which is good. I'm fine with that, you know, like I don't need them to, to, do exactly as I tell them, like that would be weird. But, you know, they're taking some of my suggestions and they're kind of turning it into their own idea. And I've already seen some of their suggestions implemented and it's, and or some of their, some of the things I've suggested implemented in their own way and it's good. But the one major thing I kept, I kept insisting on was, or back at the second class library, um, but one of the major things I kept insisting on was that, uh, you know, that they open up at least one or two more Art Deco public rooms on the ship. I know they don't want to open them all because, you know, they make a lot of money off of, you know, uh, renting out those rooms to meetings, banquets, uh, you know all kinds of public, or not public, um, private events and stuff like that. They make a lot of money doing that. And um, and they don't want to give it all away, especially if they're doing tours of the ship, because they make a lot of money off of tours as well. Um, so if, if everybody has access to every single room, nobody's going to want to take a tour to see those rooms when they could just do it, you know, for a much cheaper cost. So I understand, but I told them, I'm like... I'm like, just open one or two more Art Deco rooms because the only Art Deco space you get to see on the ship is the main hall and the observation bar. Like, unless you take a tour, you can't really see any other Art Deco public rooms. Um, you know, there, there's the foyers, you know, the fo or foyers, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, some people will say foyer, but um, there's the foyers at every deck level, you know, of the main staircase, you know, but there's really, you can't really walk into any public rooms without taking a tour. And so I told him, I said, look, I'm like, use the first class main lounge on promenade deck. Promenade deck is where all the stuff is happening anyway. That's where all the entertainment is. That's where all the shopping and dining is, you know, and I knew that, um, you know, they're doing this event called Meet Me at the Mary, which um, takes place in the Observation Bar, and it's, like, it's really cool, actually. It's like a happy hour um, where they have live entertainment. Um, let's go down here. Where they have live entertainment, and um, and they do, like, like, you know, sometimes it's, like, a swing band. Sometimes they do, like, jazz. Sometimes they do, um, like, foxtrots and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, and it's been very successful. I mean, the, the, every time they host it every Tuesday, it is so crowded in the observation bar, it overflows into outside. I've even seen it overflow even, you know, down the next level. So a deck out right at the base of the mast. I've seen them put up tables and stuff there just because that event is so popular. I've suggested to them you know, they should move that event or do some other kind of event in the first class main lounge. You know, the main lounge should be open all day for people to explore, but there should also be entertainment and stuff happening in the first class main lounge all day long. There should be stuff for people to see and do when they go in that room because, you know, exploring the ship is pretty cool, but, you know, I've 
I've seen people go to the Queen Mary and they're like, it looks cool, but I wish there was more to see, you know, or more to do also because they go there, they look around and they're like, okay, well, there's really nothing to do. There's no entertainment. There's no nothing. And unless you're there on a day when they're doing, you know, something like meet me at the Mary, then you're not going to see anything, you know, and I've tried to tell them that and it's been difficult because uh, I think they have plans of their own and they're not ready to tell me what those plans are. So, you know, I can suggest things to them, but they won't exactly tell me whether or not they're going to go with the plan or with the idea because maybe they're not ready to tell me yet or maybe they're just not going to do it, you know. So I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to know, but I wish that they would take that advice above all else. <laughs> They need to reopen the first class main lounge for entertainment and exploration. People need to see more of the ship for the price that they pay to get on the ship in the first place. I mean, yeah, it's great you get to walk around the corridors and stuff of the ship, but people aren't paying to walk around the corridors. I mean, most people are not fans of ocean liners, so they're they're they want to be there for if you will, the Titanic experience. They want to feel like they're on an old ship. And um, and it's, you know, while you do get to feel a little bit like that walking through the corridors of Queen Mary, it's not the same as walking into a big Art Deco room like the main lounge. So um, I feel like I'm talking too much. Let me check my comments here. Um, historic ship says, are you near the stern of the Titanic? I am now, yeah. Um, but I think that question was from much earlier. Uh... Oh, is, is uh, Titanic Honor and Glory live right now? I did not know they were doing a live stream. <laughs> I had no idea Titanic Honor and Glory was doing a live stream. I wouldn't have done mine today if I knew that because, you know, I, I don't want to. You know, when you're a YouTuber, you, you look out for other YouTubers, you know. You don't want to... Um, you know, like, if they schedule something, then you don't want to schedule something over them, you know? You try to give everybody their their space and stuff like that. So I try to do that, but sometimes something slips through the cracks, and I have no idea. Like, if I had known Titanic Honor and Glory was live streaming right now, I'd probably be watching that live stream myself. Um, because I like when they do live streams. Um, but yeah... All right, so where else should we go? Cat says they also closed off access to the boiler rooms on the Queen Mary. Hopefully, they'll be reopened. Um So I, I do think that they will. What is that? Oh, Cafe Parisian. Okay. So I do think that they will um, reopen some of the boiler rooms because they're going to be starting up an old tour called um, Ghosts and Legends. It, it was a tour from the 1990s. It lasted even through to the 2010s. Um, but uh, just before the pandemic or several years before the pandemic, actually, they had to stop doing those tours. Um, but they want to start them up again and kind of refresh it. Uh, and part of that Ghosts and Legends tour is to take you down into the boiler rooms. So I think that they're going to be refurbishing some of the special effects that are in those boiler rooms in order to do that tour. So we're in the Cafe Parisien. This is, um, you know, meant to be like a like a French garden cafe. Um, and it does look like that, actually. Um, 
you know what I like about the the lighting in this game is how realistic it looks. I mean, just look at that. It looks so real. And, you know, and it's the light. It's the light that makes it look that way. Um, I remember when this demo didn't have the realistic lighting. It just, it looked like... I can't describe it. Um, it didn't look like real daylight. It looked like a daylight in a video game, and and it was perfectly fine. I was like, oh, this is cool, and I and then they said they were gonna do this realistic lighting, and I was like, I don't think that'll make much of a difference, you know. I was like, it's it, you know, they don't need to do that. But then when they introduced it, I was like, whoa, this looks real, and they didn't do anything with the graphics. They didn't enhance the graphics. They just enhanced the lighting and it made everything look like 10 times more real. It was just so crazy. Like, you, if I pause here and look, you know, you, lo you look at the restaurant, at a glance, you would never know that this was a video game. You would never know. It, it looks like, like I'm like live streaming in a real place. <laughs> like, you know, of course you stare at it long enough and you, you can see some elements that make it look like a video game, but but you know the carpet you know, you know that's another thing it's like it looks so real it looks like you could reach out and you know it you would it would feel like a carpet you know so they've done such a good job with this honestly i'm such a big fan of what they've done here and this is one of my favorite restaurants actually, actually no this is my favorite restaurant aboard the Titanic because it's so beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. And you know what I really like? Purple is my favorite color. So when I see the carpet, I'm just like, wow. I don't know. Maybe it could be pink, but... But it, at times, it looks purple. It, I mean, really, it looks more lavender, if you ask me. But I'm not a fan of lavender, either the color or the smell. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it is still somewhat purple, and I do like purple. I wish the little mood light behind me can go purple, because I do that. But it doesn't do that. Um... All right, so Chloe says the Art Deco experience of the Queen Mary should have been preserved as a museum event. There is not really anything else like it. What What do you mean, like? Are, like, I'm trying to think. Are you saying that that there should be an Art Deco museum aboard the Queen Mary? Oh, Mark says THG said they would be live most every day during the month because of Titanic. Leading up to April 14th. Oh, I see. I keep forgetting that April is the month. Um, History on the Lake says, "Will you, when you get a minute, can you go up to the wheelhouse? Because every time I try to load this up, it crashes." Okay. Historic ship says, "Isidore Strauss was the co-owner of Macy's." Okay.
Five Cap says Queen Mary has the same promenade deck windows as Britannic. Wouldn't Britannic have the same promenade deck windows as Titanic? So we are in the first class smoking room, one of the most elegant looking rooms on the ship. The only thing is I'm not a fan of green, so when I see all these green upholstered chairs and stuff, I just... And when you really look at the linoleum, um, the red and blue, it's just such a strange choice when you think about it. The green, red, and blue contrasting with the more natural colors of the wood and the white, and it's just, it's a strange combination. But there's something about it that kind of works, you know? When you look at it from a distance, if you, if you look at everything too close up, you, it, the colors really contrast each other. But, but it all kind of works, you know? Here you got your tobacco products and things. Try to, there we go. Chloe says they should have preserved the whole ship more carefully. Yeah, they should have, but you know, in in 1970, there was really no predicting how people would feel about ocean liners. You know, there wasn't the same kind of the same kind of passion for old ships as there are today. You know, I would say the majority of that passion today can stem from the movie Titanic. You know, while there were Titanic fans before that, um, and there were fans of Art Deco and 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 old styles like you know before that. Most of the fans today are fans because of the movie Titanic. And so they've gotten into other ships and they've enjoyed ships like Queen Mary. Um, but yeah, the, the thing is, is that back then, you know, Ocean Liner fans in 1970 were very few of them. Very, very few of them. And, um... And so when Queen Mary was purchased and taken to Long Beach, they wanted to, they had plans for preserving most of the ship, but there were a lot of doubts. There were doubts that those plans would work at all, you know. They thought, well, you know, if we choose to preserve most of the ship, um, you know, we might be missing out on ways to make money, you know, because they wanted to build all kinds of attractions and things inside the Queen Mary. And if you leave everything as is, then they can't build what they need to build to make the money they want to make. So there was a lot of doubts. There was a lot of like, should we keep it old? Because do people really care about that? You know, at the time, people really didn't. I mean, let's face it, the 1970s were not known as the decade for preservation. <laughs> the 1970s was the decade when almost anything old was destroyed. And it's one of the reasons why I have such animosity towards the 1970s is because I'm a fan of history, I'm a fan of architecture, I'm a fan of um, of just old stuff. And in the 1970s, it, that decade was just more so than the rest of them known for getting rid of old things. They just didn't care about them in, in, the, in that decade. They destroyed so much. Um, so it was actually really lucky that the Queen Mary even survived through the 1970s. Um, and part of that luck was actually because they did a lot of stuff with the Queen Mary. They did a lot of attractions and things that were interesting to people of the 1970s. You know, the people often get angry and say, oh, they ripped out all the boilers and destroyed so much. And it's like, yeah, they did. But the museum that they built at the time did help them make the money they really needed. Eventually, the museum would flop, but when it was running, when it was brand new, 
it was a big attraction and it helped to keep the ship um, relevant and popular for the time, which was really important through the 1970s. Um, Cause like I said, seventies were known for destroying everything. And then, you know, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's really just a miracle that the ship has lasted this long. So, um, you know, and Queen Mary was the very first ocean liner to become a museum, you know, a hotel and museum. I mean, n nobody had done that before with an ocean liner, so nobody really knew how successful it would be. So that's why it's kind of like, it's easy today to kind of go, oh, well, they should have done this, they should have done that. But, you know it was the first ship to ever become that kind of thing. It's hard to know what they should have done. Um, I can't, like, from a distance, I can't read these. Uh, the chat. All right, I got a few people asking for me to go to the wheelhouse, so yeah, I'll do that. Back on Pro says... I'm not happy with them scrapping Queen Mary's lifeboats. I see the need to remove them, but scrapping them was unnecessary. Lots of museums would be happy to have one. That was a complex problem to have because... Uh, yeah, there were museums that were interested in having them. Problem is, is that those boats are so massive that... You see, I, I was involved in that situation. I was working for Kiyomai Restore the Queen. We were trying to get those lifeboats a new home. So we were... Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, that painting. Every single time. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen my previous live streams, but every single time I see that painting, it looks like there's a person standing there. Oh, good Lord. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was involved in that situation because I was at the time working with QMI Restore the Queen. We were a nonprofit and we were lo looking to help find those lifeboats a new home. And, uh, there were a lot, there were a lot of issues. Um, you know, th on one hand you had the city's need to get rid of these boats because they were causing stress to the ship and they didn't they or they claimed they didn't have room to store all those boats and the other thing too is that the boats were so badly deteriorated i mean i've seen them with my own eyes there were holes the size of me in the bottom of the keels there so some of the keels were completely gone um and they were covered up with like a fake fiberglass sheet to make it look like the lifeboat was still intact, but it wasn't. Um, you know, the fiberglass sheet wasn't even properly attached. It was screwed into the boat. Um, so, it, you know, so people have these memories of the lifeboats being intact, but they actually weren't. Most of them didn't even have, like, a bottom. They were so rotted out, and the previous companies just put, like, a, a, a little fiberglass sheet there to... Um, to give it a bottom and yeah so that made them very dangerous to move and transport because the keel of, of a boat is uh is the backbone and without the backbone anything could happen the whole thing could snap and fall apart and so they were really lucky they got those lifeboats off of the ship um without them snapping in half and the other thing, too, was they were covered in lead paint. You know, they had done lead tests 
um, and I had a, uh, I had been involved with the research of the lifeboats, asking, you know, well, well, my my friends are really more the historians that did it, but uh, you know, I asked them. I said, "Is it true that the that there's lead paint on them?" And they said, "Yeah, it actually, there's it it you know the some of the bottom layers of the paint are all lead." Um, so lead is today treated like a hazardous material. It's not just it's not oh, I'm just paint. We'll just scrape it off. It's treated as a hazardous material. If you want to get rid of lead paint, it has to go into like a facility <laughs> that will that will that you know that can handle the removal of lead paint. Um, so yeah, so you know, and then it, you know, I had contacted many museums. You know, when I was part of QMI, I had contacted many museums to get them interested in in acquiring a life a lifeboat and they were a lot of them were some of them were like oh we don't have the space um but a lot of them were they said you know we would love to but we need like a year to prepare for it because it's a lot of money i mean and it's it, it, it was nearly impossible to move those boats anywhere because like a lot of the places that wanted the boats were on the east coast of the united states and the easiest way to move those boats was actually by street but the problem with moving those those boats on land is they're wider than a typical um car lane in the united states which means that you have to have a wide load permit and in the united states if you want to transport something with a wide load you have to get permits from every county that it passes through so imagine having to get a wide load permit for every single county from LA to New York or from LA to, you know, to Georgia or something, you know, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of planning and that's a lot of time. And then it was in the middle of a truck driver shortage. There was that time when, when the, you remember hearing about that, where there was no truck drivers to transport stuff. That was around the same time that all those freight ships were stuck out in the harbors because they were, you know, they're carrying their containers and stuff like that, but there was no trucks to pick them up. You know, so that was during a truck driver shortage. There was nobody to transport those lifeboats anywhere. So, and the city only gave people two months. You know, they said, look, we, we need the parking lot for other refurbishment projects and other things that we're doing, you know, so we have nowhere to store these boats and, you know, and we can't, transport all of them through the streets it's just not safe and they're falling apart and you never know what's going to land where and it's going to become an epa problem <laughs> an environmental protection agency so it really was an impossible situation as frustrated as i was that a lot of the boats were destroyed it really was an impossible situation it you it's it wouldn't be fair to say oh long beach long beach is the problem it you know they did try to a certain extent, but it was an impossible situation, you know? Um, and, you know, and with those boats being as deteriorated as they were, there was almost no way to save them, you know? Because when like 50% of the boat is completely rotted away, you're just, you're, you're just rebuilding the boat from the ground up and you might as well just do it yourself with all new materials because that's what you're going to be doing anyway. There's nothing to save. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, they did save 11 boats, though. So there are two on the ship right now. One of them is on the dock, and there are eight more in storage. Um, and I've had visual confirmation that those eight in storage are still in existence. So... Um, so yeah, so there, there are still eight lifeboats in storage and three at the, uh, Long Beach Queen Mary location. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. At least half, pretty much half of the Queen Mary's lifeboats are still around and they do plan on restoring those boats eventually. Um, all right, I better, I want to check my each lifeboat weighed oh 
gosh, what I'm trying to remember. I think it was fifteen thousand pounds. Yeah, so it's about Yeah, so it's about seven and a half tons per lifeboat. And that was their weight, uh that was their calculated weight. Um well okay, so some of them still had some of their internal tanks and machinery. Some of them still had an engine, um, all that kind of stuff. So the weights varied per lifeboat, but it was estimated that over 300,000 pounds of lifeboats have been removed from the ship. And that's not counting the two that are still on the ship. So there was a lot of weight removed from the ship when they did that. And the whole ship actually rose out of the water by about, I would say, nine inches. And I know that there's been some people that are like, oh, but there's, that's too much for the ship to have risen out of the water. Well, how else do you explain it? Because the day before, the ship was resting at a certain level in the water, and the day after they removed the boats, it, was, it rose up like nine to ten inches out of the water. There's no other explanation for that. You know, they weren't doing any other projects that day. So, yeah. Yeah, Historic Ship says, also the Queen Mary's lifeboats were 30 feet long. No, the 30-foot lifeboats were two of them. The accident boats were 30 feet long. The others were 36 feet long. So the accident boats were 9 feet wide by 30 feet long. But the regular lifeboats were... 12 feet wide by 36 feet long they're huge they're absolutely massive so yeah they're they they are not tiny boats i think people I, i've seen a lot of people who who at the time when the boats were taken off the ship they people were like oh those lifeboats you know the, you know they could be saved and stuff like that and I, I, and the things that they were saying i was like i don't think you guys realize how big these boats are because and some people didn't even know they were made of steel. There were lots of people that are like, "Oh, you know, it's made of wood, so you can easily fix it." And I'm like, "Wait, it's not made of wood. It, the, the boats are all steel. There's, in fact, there's no wood left on them. <laughs> they they did have wood boards and things like that to stand on and all that kind of stuff. But but the boats themselves were made of steel, riveted steel. A lot of people didn't know that. Oh, my tea is getting cold. I keep forgetting I have this." <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with the comments. Oh, oops. I'll try to straighten this out here so I can operate this with one hand. Okay. In America says the Queen Mary has gone through so many major events, the Great Depression, World War II, Disney, the pandemic. It's incredible that it's still open and being restored. It really is. It is a complete mirror. I want people to realize that. It is a miracle that the Queen Mary is still around. It's not, you know, it's not like I mean, in World War II there were six different times that the ship faced danger that could have ended the ship entirely. And then, you know, there was, I mean, even the moment that the ship was built, you know, it was, it faced the great depression it, it almost, the ship almost wasn't even built at all, but then she was, then she went through world war two. And then after world war two, you know, the, the ship enjoyed some prosperity for a while. Um, you know, but, uh, 
yeah, what was I trying to say? Um, you know, and then when the ship retired, you know, by some miracle, it did not go to the scrapyard. They and the, the city of Long Beach ended up purchasing the Queen Mary. That was a miracle in itself because that was just unheard of. That was just, I mean, really think about it. How many ocean liners, you know, <laughs> how many ocean liners in 1967 or before were purchased and kept as a museum? None. None. The Queen Mary was the only one. So she was saved. She became the first ocean liner to be uh, purchased for preservation. And then you have the miracle of of her making it all the way to Long Beach without any issues of sinking because she had to go around Cape Horn. The waters around Cape Horn are very tumultuous. They are very, very dangerous. They wherever uh, wherever they can, captains and you know ship routes and stuff like that, they try not to sail around the Cape because it is so dangerous that even massive ships could could sink. Uh, but they had to bring the Queen Mary around Cape Horn because it was the only way to get to California. That she was too big for the to go through the Panama Canal at the time. So, so yeah, you had the Queen Mary going around Cape Horn, and then when she came to Long Beach, you know they faced so many issues. They they, they had estimated that after purchasing the Queen Mary, the cost of restoring the ship would be eight and a half million. That's what they estimated. They said, oh, it'd be eight and a half million to turn her into a hotel and museum. Well, $68 million later, the Queen Mary opened as a hotel and museum. $68 million. That was a lot of money back then, back in 1969 slash 1970. So it was a miracle that the ship even opened as a hotel and museum because they were so far over budget and the budget had ballooned so badly that many people were wondering if the ship would ever even open. But she did, and she opened in a pretty quick amount of time because they started working on her in 1969. So, you know, the fact that she opened in 1970, or no, 1971, I'm sorry, opened in 1971 as a museum, and then in 1972 they started allowing people to book rooms. It was just a miracle. And several times since then... You know, when the ship has faced financial hardship, and I think, you know, the first time they ever talked about scrapping the Queen Mary was in the late 80s, then Disney took over. Then those talks came back again in 1992 when Disney left, because they were like, what are we going to do? We have the ship. The Queen Mary closed for several months to, I think, even a whole year in 1992, because they weren't sure what to do with it. And the Queen Mary faced being scrapped back then. And then, uh, and then she faced being scrapped again, um, in, I want to say, um, in like 2015, 2016, but then someone else managed to purchase the lease, which was, uh, Urban Commons. And then of course, again, the talks for scrapping came again in, uh, when uh, the pandemic so 2020 when the ship had to close everybody thought this this ship wasn't going to reopen again you know there was nothing and really she was not headline news at the time so nobody was really talking about the queen mary except to say bad things you know <laughs> the only thing if you looked on the internet in 2020 or 2021 for information about the what's going on with the queen mary it was nothing but bad news you couldn't find a single positive thing. It was all these things about, oh, the ship's going to capsize and it, it's going to cost, you know, 280 to $290 million to restore the ship and blah, 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 blah. All this stuff that when I had looked through the paperwork myself, because, you know, at the time I was barely beginning to have my obsession with the Queen Mary. And I decided to, to look for myself. I said, how bad is this really? because I know that sometimes things can get blown out of proportion. I looked through all the, the inspection work going back to 1990. You know, I had looked at all these different, all this different paperwork for the city of Long Beach and, you know, what's going on with the ship and all the finances, all that kind of stuff. 
and what I had determined at the time was, you know, there's actually n not much going wrong with the ship. I mean, the, the, the ship was not really going to sink and capsize, like they said. Even the words of the inspector uh, who had said those words were twisted to make it sound like the ship was imminently going to sink. That's not what the inspector said. He said, if you keep neglecting it, of course the ship is going to eventually, you know, rot out and capsize. Of course, that happens with anything. You build a tree house and you don't maintain it, eventually it's going to collapse and fall down. You know, so that's what he's trying to say. But the media was like, ooh, I love these words. Let's turn it into, you know, reality. So, you know, and then there was all this negativity about the ship. Oh, the ship is so rotten and rusted. And I looked at all the inspection reports. I'm like, there's nothing here that indicates the ship is in any, like, facing any major rot or damage that would actually be detrimental to the life of the ship. Sure, there are areas that are so, you know, rusted and rotten, you know, little things, handrails and stuff like that, but there were no, there were no, like, decks on the ship where if you stood on it, you'd fall right through. There was nothing like that. And so I thought, why is there all this negativity about the Queen Mary when, like, almost none of it is true? And I looked at the finances, I'm like, and I, I'm like, I'm like, the finances to this ship are terrible because the previous companies that ran the ship had no idea what the heck they were doing. You know, they tried to run it like a hotel, but it's not just a hotel, it's a ship. And then they tried to run it like a museum, and it's like, it's not just a museum, it's a, mu it's a hotel and museum. You know, I'm like, they just didn't get it. So here I was, I was like, I got to do something because here's a ship that, you know, I'm like, here's a ship that, that really could be successful, but you know, there's all this negativity and you know, nobody's looking at the potential. So I went and I started making my first video. My first video was let's save the Queen Mary. And I gave everybody every reason why the ship could be saved. Next thing you know, you know, all my Queen Mary videos are becoming super popular. People are looking at it. There's, there's hope once again, you know, that something could be done. And then, you know, next thing you know, City of Long Beach is reopening the ship and they're saying, you know, we've been really lucky because there's been a resurgence in uh, a love for the history of the ship. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> you know, when I first started covering Queen Mary stuff, there weren't too many people that were covering, you know, the history or the construction of the Queen Mary at the time. There were a few videos here and there, you know, random stuff that was like, you know, previously part of a documentary or something, and it was reposted on YouTube, you know, 10 years prior or something like that. But, you know, when I was making my Queen Mary stuff, I was pretty much the only person on the internet that was doing that. And I'm very thankful that it became successful because now the ship is reopened again, you know. So, let me, let me check my comments. The battery on my camera is about to die so my image is probably going to freeze um pretty soon um blackbird pictures is talking about titanic they say is that boiler fire weakening whole theory true no it's completely not true um Cat said in the in the eighties they were showing to the public how the boats were lowered on the Queen Mary. Yep, they did that um lifeboat demonstration all the way until the year twenty fourteen. And I think they want eventually when they refurbished the lifeboats and stuff like that, I think they want to bring that um that lifeboat demonstration thing back. So I think they want to to do it again. Uh let's see.
Verdi says this needs the engine sound. Yeah, they will eventually put sound effects and stuff in the final game. Uh, hello, Ron. I'm doing very well. How about you? Let's see here. I just saw a question that I could probably answer. Let me see. Blackbird Picture says, Why was Queen Mary's third horn removed? So the third whistle on Queen Mary was removed because it was... Um, so they... they so, <laughs> so they had to rebuild brand new funnels for the Queen Mary. And when that happened, they had to take the original whistles off of the ship. And, um, and then when they finally rebuilt brand new funnels... They put two of the whistles back on the for the forward funnel, but the third one they didn't put back on the th on the middle funnel because uh, they wanted to put it in the museum of the ship so you could see it up close, which I thought was a good idea. Um, and then in uh, the early two thousands, um, when Cunard was building the Queen Mary two, the the newest ocean liner, the current one that is out there on the ocean. Um, they wanted to use one of Queen Mary's original whistles uh, on the ship. And so uh, the city of Long Beach um, lo loaned them the whistle on permanent loan. And so the whistle was taken from Long Beach and then transported by train to New York. And then, it w and then that whistle boarded the QE2, the, the Queen Elizabeth II, um, and then that whistle went all the way to France on the QE2. And then it was refurbished in France, and then it was put on the Queen Mary II. Um, I think my, my camera's about to die, so you're probably going to see it pause real quick because i got to shut it off before it catches fire or something. <laughs> it make, My camera is just, like, freaking out. Um, so, yeah, so... Then it was re yeah, so it was restored and put on the new ship, and it's been there ever since. And maybe when that ship retires, uh, they will send the whistle back to, uh, um, back to uh, uh, the Queen Mary. But I'm not sure if they will. But yeah, so um, that is what happened to the third whistle. Um. Finally, I'm catching up on these on these this live chat. Um, um. Historic ship says I never knew that. Oh, well, I'm glad I was able to teach it, teach you something new. Um, historic ship says, can we have a house tour someday of my house? No, no, I'm not the only one that lives here. So it, it would be like a, a violation of other people's privacy. Um, Armas Queen Mary and Battleship New Jersey are about the same age. That's true. Okay, so... Oh my god, it really paused on that. <laughs> so I was like, that's a flattering image to, to pause on. I'm like, what image? I'm like, oh geez. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's gonna be embarrassing. Um... All right, so I still have time to keep doing this stream for another 15 minutes, so uh, let's see where we should go. Maybe... Maybe up here. All right. You know, a lot of people ask me, They, you know, they say... Uh, 
how did you first get into ocean liners? And first, I must say, I'm not really an ocean liner fanatic. Um, I'm really more just like a Queen Mary fanatic. And Titanic is really cool, so I am interested in Titanic. Um, just a little bit. Not obsessed with it or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, what got me into Ocean Liners was not Titanic, actually. Um, because I had seen the movie since, since I was a child. Actually, in 1997, when it came out, my grandfather took me and my sister to the family movie theater. They had, they had a, they had family theaters back then. I don't know if they still have them anymore. But basically, a family theater was where they took a movie, even if it was R-rated, and they would cut out the bad parts. And then they would just play the good parts. Um... And so we went to a family theater. Oh, by the way, folks, someone asked me earlier if this game shows any shear on the ship. And this is the only place on the ship where you can see shear. So you can kind of see the the knobs on the doors. You know, when they're when they're lined up, they make kind of an upwards bend. It's hard to tell from here, but Yeah, there, there's a little bit of shear in this area. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we went to see Titanic in a family theater, and I enjoyed it. And then as I grew up, I got to see Titanic a lot because we had it on DVD and stuff like that. Um, am I still walking slow? This feels slow. I think it's because I'm still zoomed in, like... There we go. Um... What was I gonna say? But yeah, so it wasn't Titanic that got me into ships in any way. It was Queen Mary. It was visiting the Queen Mary in 2020. Something in me just suddenly... snapped open, and or awake, or whatever you call it, and... And, uh, and I was just, I just fell in love with the Queen Mary and I just had to know more about it. And ever since then, I've been obsessed with learning more and more. And in fact, it's culminated in my own website, RMSQM Wiki. The link for it is in the description below. So if you guys are interested, it's, it's a, um, it's a, it's an encyclopedia, a wiki site entirely dedicated to the Queen Mary. And I've been working on it. Uh, it. It's been open for a while. It's not completed, but uh, I have been working on it piece by piece ever since. Little tidbits at a time when I have the, the time to spare. But yeah, it, it will never be completed because there's always going to be information and stuff. So, uh, but yeah. Link is in the description below. And it's really fun. I think you guys would like it. You get to learn a lot of stuff about the Queen Mary. And because it's a wiki site, the way it's designed, you can learn as much or as little as you want. You don't have to be stuck um, just learning certain things about the ship or or having to read whole pages if you didn't want to. There, It's designed in a way that you can learn as much or as little as you want. Right now we are in the third class um, multi-purpose room. So as you can see, there are hatches for, for cargo and baggage. Um, and then they would cover over the hatches with these grates. And, um, you know, and the room itself could be used as like a lounge for third class passengers. They got tables and benches here. Um, they would play music, they would play games. There's just a large open space to kind of just, you know, just relax. In fact, I think this is D-Deck because the ceilings are so high. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is D-Deck. And... You can see that there are staircases that lead up from here, but uh, 
due to the game, I can't really go anywhere else. So yeah, I gotta check my comments now. Okay, so let's see. Historic Ships was asking about uh, the working alleyway. Yes, that was Scotland Road. Um, Blackbird Pictures. Sheer is the upwards curve in an old ship like Titanic or Queen Mary. They had upwards curves at both ends, and that was to help give the ship a bit more strength when cresting huge swells out at sea. Um, they also had something called camber, which means that the there is a, a a downwards curve on either side of the ship. So port side, starboard side, there would be a downwards curve, and the center line of the ship would be higher than the sides of it. So they had shear and camber, and both of those helped to strengthen the ship. But camber was also very important because if there was ever any water that washed into the ship the camber would help drain it out of the ship and into the scuppers and the scuppers are like um uh drains i guess you would call them back on pro i've seen a night to remember and it's it was pretty good it, you know it i mean I have no complaints about it, but I still like James Cameron's Titanic a lot more. I think it was just more entertaining. So hold on, I'm gonna... Here, I'll take us to Scotland Road real quick. Um, so Scotland Road is, oh wait, where are we? Oh, okay, yeah. The, oh, by the way, this is the cabin, I believe, of the, um, what's his name? Uh, the, the master at arms, so the man in charge of kind of policing the ship, I believe that's his cabin, and his office is right there, right next to the cabin. Um, but I'm going to pause right here, give you a look down Scotland Road, because I need to read some comments here. Okay, so I'm actually kind of confused. Historic ship says Alex is so Sigma. What does that mean? Is that an insult? Um, all right, history on the lakes. See you later. Have fun. K4RNA says, Alex, I really enjoyed the San Francisco Park video. I hope it does well. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, it's already um, it's already failed. It, usually a, a video has its success within the first few days. If it doesn't have a success, then it, it's, you know. Unfortunately, it didn't do well. Um, but that's nothing I can really fix. Blackbird Picture says, why is Queen Mary's propeller so small? 
Queen Mary's propeller, uh, when, okay. So when the Queen Mary first uh, set sail, she had the largest propellers on any ship ever. <laughs> so um, it wouldn't be fair to say that they're so small because literally no other propellers matched the size of Queen Mary's propellers at the time. Her propellers today are two feet smaller than they were before. So she, when she first set sail, her propellers were 35 tons. Um, today they're more like 32 tons because they made them slightly smaller to make them, um, and I, I say slightly smaller again, two feet smaller. That's it. Two feet smaller. Um, in order to make them more efficient and the more efficient ones actually worked a lot better. Um, but Queen Mary does have some of the largest propellers ever put on an ocean liner. So they are not small by any means. They are very big. Back on Pro says, we should place our pets here. Who thinks Clive Palmer's Titanic 2 will be built? Clive Palmer's been saying he's going to build that Titanic 2 since I was a teenager. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I think he says those things because you know he's a businessman, and I think that when he says ambitious things like that, it makes other companies want to invest in his other businesses. So I think it makes them excited and they make some makes them think that, oh, you know, this guy's got dreams, he's got goals, he's got ambitions. Let's invest in his businesses because he's going places. I don't really believe that he's ever going to actually build the Titanic 2. You know, it's just it it would only cater to the super rich. Nobody here in this live chat is gonna be able to go. I mean, you're gonna have to be like a millionaire. So, yeah, I don't really, you know, even if he builds it, I don't like the idea. I don't think, I don't think you should build something that was involved in a tragedy for the sake of entertainment. I don't think that's right. You know, what the people of this Titanic honor and glory thing are trying to do is they want to build a virtual museum. That's why they built this whole Queen Mary, or not Queen Mary, Titanic thing, this uh, Titanic game. It's not really a game, it's going to be a museum. So you can be able to walk through it and learn all kinds of stuff about the ship, about the people, about the situation and all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be educational. But what Clive Palmer intends to do is not educational. What he intends to do is to make a lot of money off of a tragedy. And I think that's wrong. I don't like that idea. You know, it'd be different if he was like, oh, let's, let's rebuild the Olympic. Okay, the Olympic was a very successful ship, had a very successful run, um, and it was much beloved. It's not as well known as Titanic, but it looks a lot like Titanic. So people who love Titanic could get their their little Titanic buzz off of visiting the Olympic. Why does he have to rebuild the Titanic? I think that is just wrong. I don't like that idea. So I wouldn't be very supportive of it. But no, I don't think he's going to actually build it. He says a lot of things. lost <laughs> I think I have to go here no these don't look like jeez There we go. <laughs> I got lost for a second there. I was like, where am I? How do I get back to first class? Um, Five Cats Films. Yes, I do know what the Union Pacific's um, big boy is. I have visited the big boy before. Actually, it came... It, it Well, it came to Southern California back when I lived there, and I went to go visit it. And so I got to see it all steamed up and stuff. Pretty impressive locomotive.
Hello, Swifty. Time travel. All right, so now we have reached the first class swimming pool on Titanic. You know what was weird was <laughs> a couple weeks ago, there was a Titanic fan who came on my channel and clicked on my video about Queen Mary's swimming pool. And then they commented that Queen Mary's swimming pool was really ugly. Like the whole room was ugly. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, if you're not a fan of ocean liners or anything, I might understand why you would think Queen Mary's swimming pool is ugly. I mean, I, I mean, I barely understand it, but I understand it. You know, it's not, it's not as beautiful compared to like a swimming pool room you could build in, you know, in a brick and mortar building on land, you know, you can build some really beautiful stuff, but on an ocean liner, you're more limited by certain things. Nevertheless, this person was a Titanic fan. And I'm like, it's a bit of like, you know, the pot calling the kettle black <laughs> when a Titanic fan says that Queen Mary's swimming pool room is ugly because it's like, look around. This is all like bare steel and a very simple like tank of water in the floor. It, there's no decoration, you know? At least the Queen Mary's pool room is like three times larger than this. It's it's covered in like, in, in a really rare synthetic material called fused quartz, which makes it give it that, um, that, that mother of pearl ceiling. Um, you know, it's and it's covered in glazed ter terracotta tiles all over the, the bulkheads and the pillars. Like, Queen Mary's pool room is much nicer than this, you know? So it's, it, I was just so confused when they said that. I was just like, how can you, how can you say that, you know? I don't know. It was, I was just so surprised. Glub, 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 glub. So, yeah. I just noticed there isn't a 14th changing stall. I mean, 13th changing stall. It goes 12 to 14. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like that. All right, folks. Well, I think I'm going to end the live stream here because we've been on here for a good over two and a half hours, or one and a half hours, which is perfect for me, I think. Um, King of Battleships says, I, I don't know why they couldn't make Titanic's pool more decorated. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not really sure either. I, I think they were just going for like a very clean, sterile look. They were going for something that felt professional, like, you know, kind of like a hospital should look clean and, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think they were just kind of going for something that looked that looked utilitarian. I think that was the idea behind it, but at the same time, I could be wrong. But yeah. Uh, Yeah, everyone makes a joke about Titanic's pool still being filled with water. All right, folks, I'm going to get going. And, um, yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed the video. And I will see you all next time. 
Um, I do not know when the next tea time stream is. It does take a lot of effort to put those tea time streams together. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see. I've been working really hard on videos lately. So, you know, you'll have to give me time. I, I don't always have time to set up a tea time stream. All right, folks. Anyway, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.